Praise God. It's so good to be here with you. <clears throat> and um, I'm so glad to be here. Um, trust that you're glad that I'm here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for those that are, all two of you. And uh, <clears throat> uh, hopefully maybe by the end of it, more of you will be. But anyway, I'm glad to be here. And it's a privilege to know Bruce and Anya. And uh, even though she would not wear a Bok jersey yesterday, but we fortunately are full of grace and forgiveness. So we release her and set her free of her grave, grievous sins. And, uh, but we, <laughs> yeah, we love, uh, love them. And um, just a really beautiful presence uh, in, in the place, and, uh, which is indicative of the ministry. And good to see what God is doing here um, at the Word Church in Kimberley. And uh, so um, I'm sure a lot has been said about the precious people resource that is in the city. You are more valuable, more precious than diamonds. Amen. So I have a word for you this morning. I want you to get your Bibles ready. Is that okay? Um, um, for the millennials, your device. For us old-fashioned people, uh, your pages, you know, the book. And, um, but um, let's just trust God for something awesome this morning. Amen. <clears throat> so you all ready? You're ready, you ready, you ready, you ready. There is something about the atmosphere of this world and... Um, Paul talks about it in Ephesians chapter 2. He talks about that we at one time were objects of God's wrath. We were same in nature because we were part of um, the unsaved, the Gentiles. Uh, but he tells us, but because of his great love for us, God is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions and sins. Is that okay? You will know that passage. But the Bible tells us, Paul tells us, that um, we lived under that um, spirit of the air, that spirit of disobedience, the ruler of the kingdom of the air. Now, remember that in the Bible it talks about, I must not go into too much detail, okay, because of time. But remember the Bible talks about the fact that in the beginning God created heavens and the earth. Paul says he was caught up into the third heavens. How many know there are three heavens? God created three heavens. The first heavens is the space between the floor that we stand on and where the breathable atmosphere ends. Is that okay? The second heaven is outer space. The third heaven is the spiritual realm where God lives, the three heavens. Good? And so the, the ruler of the kingdom of the air rules in the breathable atmosphere space. Is that okay? Around the world. But he doesn't rule in the third heaven. Satan does not have access to the presence of God. Is that okay? I can show you a lot of scriptures for that. But, but he operates in this space. And then he sets up an atmosphere. And Paul talks about it as the spirit of disobedience at work in them that do not believe. But fortunately, we've come into the obedience of the faith. That means we've come out from under that spirit and we're in another atmosphere entirely Woo! is that okay and so we live in a spiritual atmosphere that was demonstrated with the children of Israel when it was a pillar by day and a cloud or, or a pillar of fire by night and a, and a cloud by day cloud by day giving them shade from the extreme heat fire at night giving them a, a shade from the extreme cold in other words, the children of Israel in the desert were sheltered from the atmosphere of the desert because they had their own atmosphere. Is that okay? And that became prophetic of the Spirit. So tell the person next to you, you have a different atmosphere from the world. Different atmosphere. You live in a place. Now, one of the things that we need to, and that I want to share with you this morning, I'm going to just take you a little bit. I'm going to push you. Maybe you haven't heard a message like this. Um, before I really felt that this is what God wanted to share um, um, here today uh, you know as I was praying and preparing yesterday and last night and so there's a different atmosphere that we operate in and we need to be aware of it is that okay um, how many of you know even if you don't see God you can experience him is that all right he's a reality and I want to tell you the spiritual realm around us is a reality it's real and so I want to just share a little bit with you on that. So turn with me to Hebrews chapter 2. Um, the, the first passage that you were looking at was Ephesians chapter 2. No, not sorry, not Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 1. In Hebrews chapter 1, so the NIV says it a bit different to the King James. It says, in the past, in many and various ways, God spoke to our forefathers um, through the prophets. 
and but in these last days how many of you know that since jesus came we are in the last days but in the last days he has spoken to us by his son his son who is the exact representation of his being and uh, you know the outraying of his presence he was appointed heir of all things and through whom the universe was made the bible says that after he had provided purification for sin he sat down at the right hand of the majesty is that good now he sat down uh, because the sitting down meant that the, the the work of the cross was finished purification for our sins was over but i have a theory that immediately after he sat down, indicating that it ended, he stood to begin his heavenly priestly ministry, ever living to make intercession for us. Remember that when um, um, uh, Philip, uh, not uh, Stephen, was being stoned, he saw the Lord standing at the right hand of the Majesty in heaven. Is that okay? So Jesus sat down, and he's in a position of rulership and authority, but immediately he stood, and he ever lives to make intercession for us. So isn't it awesome to know that Jesus right now is interceding for you, okay? And so he's living to make intercession for us. So uh, Paul continues in Hebrew and talks about the fact that as heir, as son, he was given a name above even the name of angels. He was given a very special name. And uh, that name was not Jesus, it was not Yahweh, it was not Jehovah, the name that he was given um, and it, it, it's um, linked to the fact that he became heir of all things, was this. He was given the name Son. Is that good? Son of God. And so God says, you know, he carries on, he's quoting from the Psalms. He said, you know, this day I have begotten thee. You know, I am your father, you are my son. And he says, at no time ever, one translation says, did he ever call an angel Son. Is that okay? So, sonship is really important for us to understand. So, I want, I, and I know that uh, your pastor teaches this kind of thing, but it's really important for you to know that you are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Is that okay? When Jesus came into the world, the Bible says Mary brought forth her only begotten son or her firstborn son. Um, and, but he was only begotten in the sense that she didn't have any more children, well, she hadn't had other children. But after that, she had other children. But as far as God was concerned, he was the only begotten son. Is that okay? But after, after Jesus came us, and then we were begotten of God, then he became the firstborn amongst many brothers. Is that okay? So don't get too caught up in that, but, but I just need you to know that you are sons and daughters of God. Is that okay? Because something dynamically changed, something drastically changed from the time of the cross of Jesus. Is that okay? And, and if we get it, if we understand it, we can more and more start to walk in the correct atmosphere and start to walk in the understanding of the supernatural. Is that okay? Yeah. And, and so, so we've got to realize that we're sons. And if you read through um, Hebrews chapter 1, he starts to talk about it, indicate and starts to take us to a certain place. And then he talks about the fact that um, um, angels, he says, I think is it, it's not verse 14, it's a little bit uh, further up. I think it's at verse 7, I think. Um, you, you'll see it in your Bibles. But he basically says, you know, that his angels are winds and flames of fire. His angels are winds. Verse 7. It is verse 7. His angels are what? They winds. And they what? Flames of fire. His angels are what? They are winds. And they are also flames of fire. And that's quoted from one of the Psalms. We may get time to have a look at it. I don't know, but I just I don't want to keep it too long. But I want to be faithful to deliver enough of the word for you to get something. Is that good? Amen. And so his angels are winds. His angels are winds. His angels are winds. His angels are flames of fire. Your winds and flames of fire. And then in verse 14, he says this, Are not all angels, all angels, I think the NIV says it like this, ministering spirits, all angels. Everybody say all angels. Say all angels, every single angel. I, I don't see from the scriptures that there's revelation angels, warfare angels, they can all fight. They can all bring revelation. They all worship. 
Are you with me? Are not all angels, all ministering spirits, sent to serve the heirs, the heirs of salvation? Is that good? That NIV says you will inherit salvation. King James says the heirs of salvation. How many of you know as an heir of salvation you've inherited salvation? How many of you know there's still a sense in which we are still being saved? How many of you know our salvation is still to, to come to its fullness? Is that okay? So, so we have thousands upon thousands, millions of angels um, who operate out of that realm called heaven or out of that realm called the spirit and they are sent to serve the heirs it doesn't say they are sent to serve the servants it says they are sent to serve the heirs if we still have a servant mentality servants don't serve servants they serve heirs of salvation is that good so if you understand that you are an heir, that God has not only got one son, but like Hebrews says, he brought many sons to glory through Christ. And if you understand that with him you are a joint heir, a co-heir with Christ, you are putting yourself in a place by the revelation that you've received to uh, uh, be in a place where the servants that God created can serve you as heirs of salvation. Is that okay? So we need to understand this. And so Paul talks about it in Hebrews chapter 2. And that's why he says we need to give more careful attention to the gospel than to the law. If every disobedience and every violation of the law brought its just recompense of reward, which was judgment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? Then he indicates the role of angels in the bringing of the law. He says it was by the hands, you can keep reading and you'll see it in Hebrews 2. It was by the hands of angels through a mediator. When um, Paul continues with his letter, he says, For it was not to angels that he subjected the world to come, but somewhere it's written, What is man, that you are mindful of him? So listen, the world to come, the age to come, is this age that we're living in. It's this world. It's the home of the righteous. It's this world. Everybody say this world, this age. It's the church age, the Christian age. It's the kingdom. And so he, 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 what, what um, Paul is saying is this age that he was looking at from the book of Hebrews all the way down to today, to the word church, to you and I. He was looking ahead and he said, there is a world, there is a kingdom, there's a dominion that is coming through Christ's body. And he's saying that that world is not subject to angels. In other words, angels are not in authority in this world. They're not in charge in this world. So who is? So he says, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. Quoting Psalm 8. In other words, he's saying, it's those who understand that they are the heirs. And the joint heirs with Jesus. So in other words, you have dominion. You're in authority. You have charge. Is that good? Means right in your own little private world where you live, in your home, in your family, in your workplace, in your ministry space, in your business, uh, there's no higher authority than you under the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And it means right there in that space, you have ministering spirits sent to serve you as an heir of salvation. And that dramatically changes the whole atmosphere. So, you know, I, I'm not demon conscious. I know the Bible talks about them and I know they are there, but I would rather be God conscious, Jesus conscious, Holy Spirit conscious. I would rather be the saints who've gone before us conscious. I would rather be conscious of the ministry of angels, whether I see them or not, whether I feel them or not, they are there. Is that good? And so this morning I wanted to stir up something um, and, and, and uh, just deposit something, release something concerning the atmosphere in the word church. Amen? Amen. In WC. Uh, TWC. Okay, so, so I want to just stir something and I want you to open your heart to receive what I'm sharing with you. 
because there's been an atmosphere change even since the last time that I was here. You could feel it in the worship this morning. Amen. How many of you know that we don't join with the angels in worshiping God? They join us. Yeah. Amen. They go, my goodness, that's an attractive sound. And they come and say, we want to join in with them. And I can show you from scriptures that that is true. Is that okay? Because they come to serve the heirs. And where the heirs are standing and singing and worshiping out of, out of sonship, that understanding of who we are, they go like, oh my goodness, that's where we want to be. And they are attracted to the sound of the heirs of the kingdom. So... Um, I don't know where I'm going. I'm just preaching. I just was praying and preparing. And so I'm just sharing. But, but um, this world has been subject to us. Is that okay? So turn with me to John chapter 1. Um, the last two verses of the, the gospel of John. In uh, John chapter 1 verses 51 and 52. Remember, um, you know, Andrew found Philip, I think it was, and they went then and called Nathaniel, and Nathaniel was standing under the fig tree. And they came, said, come, we found the Messiah. And he goes walking up. And then Jesus sees him, and he says, an Israelite in whom there's no guile. You know, and he goes like, wow, that, that's amazing. How did you, you know, Jesus said, no, I saw you under the fig tree. And he's going like, wow, this is amazing. This is really incredible. He says, you believe? You believe because I said, I saw you? He said, I want to tell you, from now on, you will see greater things. Amen. Everybody say greater things. Greater, greater things. things. This is, I preached a similar message to this earlier this year, and uh, this is the only other place I've preached this. I haven't even preached it in my church. I haven't. I'm sure I will, but I haven't yet. It's because I discern um, something prophetically that God is doing in this church. Okay? So look at that person next to you and say, well, that means that's you then, because you're here today. That's you. All right? It's you. And so um, Jesus said to John, from now on, you shall see greater things. Everybody say, greater things. I'm going to see greater things. Amen? Greater things. Greater. I'm going to see greater things. We're going to see greater things. I mean, we're going to see Holy Ghost. We're going to see power, signs, wonders, miracles. We're going to see people getting saved. We're going to see greater things. And he said, from now on you shall see greater things. What if, what if, what if you see angels? What if? What if you see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man? What if you see it? What if you? So this morning by the eye of faith, we can see that. I trust that you can. Amen. Now listen, wherever in the Bible the reference to Jesus is son of man, you need to listen to me because I'm seriously now getting drunk. <laughs> when, whenever there's a reference to the son of man, he's immediately identifying with us. As the Son of God also, but whenever it says the Son of Man, he's saying, in other words, sons of men are going to experience this. Where they will see and experience angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Okay? And so, very much the church is the, the, the you know, it's the house of God. It's the gateway of heaven. So, angels ascending, angels descending. It's really interesting to me that they didn't descend and then ascend. No, no, no. They are with us. And then they ascend to the Father and then they come back to be with us. They're not with the Father and then visit us occasionally and then ascend back to the Father. No, 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 no. They are ministering spirits sent to serve the heirs of salvation. So they are with us. Amen. And every now and then, like flashes of lightning, they will ascend to go and get answers and descend to manifest them in our realm. Is that okay? So they ascend and they descend. And so Jesus said, you're going to see this. You're going to experience it. And of course, the, the beloved uh, 
um, disciples did see that and did experience it because when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness the Bible says and angels came and ministered to him angels came and strengthened him why because he was the son of man the son of God they are they are servants come to serve the heirs of the of salvation seen or unseen felt or unfelt they are there we take it by faith amen and if we can activate the heavenly realm by our faith, we can start to see something different happening. Woo yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so, um, you know, in Genesis chapter 28, you know the story of Jacob. Um, he's fleeing from his brother Esau, gets to a place, a city called Luz, and then he puts up the pillar, uh, a stone that night um, to sleep on it. And in the night he has a dream, Genesis 28. And then what he dreams, he sees a ladder coming from earth to heaven not heaven to earth earth to heaven and he sees angels on it what the angels were doing what they were say it with me they were ascending and descending same picture same picture and there above stood God and God spoke but the angels were ascending and descending in the morning he erected the pillar anointed it with oil and uh, because basically what it was he dreamt God's dream God wanted a church so that's why he changed the name to Bethel is that okay this is the house of God this is the gateway of heaven listen the church is the house of God the church is the gateway of heaven is that good in other words the church of Jesus Christ should be a place where there's where there's continuous open heavens where angels are ascending and descending and influencing and affecting and setting the atmosphere listen we live in a completely different atmosphere to the world outside how is it that we can be demon conscious, sin conscious? We should be Holy Spirit conscious, angel conscious, like woo, woo we live in a different atmosphere. Amen. I'm not saying we can't detect those things, but we don't live in that. Is that okay? And so he saw angels ascending and descending. Later, when Jacob had spent around about 21 years with his um, uncle Laban, he came back and he reached a city called Mahanaim. And the Bible says there the angels met with him. It's really interesting, but Mahanai means two camps or two groups. And it says, and the angels of God met him on the way uh, before he crossed the river of Jabbok. And then when he crossed the river Jabbok, he divided his group into two. But one of the things that Jacob suddenly became aware of as he was going back into his destiny to step more directly into it, he became aware that I'm not just one company, I'm two companies. There's not just this physical realm that I'm seeing. There's another realm with me. There's another realm. There's another realm with us. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, <clears throat> I'm not encouraging you to be spooky spiritual or anything like that. You know, um, you know often uh, after I preach these kind of messages. But it's uh, anyway, it's, never mind. Let's just carry on. And so he came to that place called Mahanaim. Angels are involved in bringing revelation. Angels are involved in all kinds of things. But because they're servants, they love to be in the background. They love to remain anonymous. They love to serve. Their nature is serving. They're not in the limelight. They don't want to be in the limelight. They don't want to take glory. Even when John fell down to worship one, he said, no, no, we fellow servants. We, you, you, you don't worship me. Even though they're awesome, you worship Jesus. We don't get caught up uh, Paul says in the false worship of angels we don't do that kind of thing but we do know they're there to serve us and they are there to facilitate to assist to encourage to bring us into a place of understanding concerning the fact that we are heirs of salvation amen are you good so far and so the ministry is that in first Peter chapter 1 verse 12 just reinforcing this point um, Peter says this concerning this salvation that the prophets wrote about you know carefully you know the, the, the time the occasion that the spirit in, in them was pointing to you know the sufferings of Christ and the glory would, that would follow he says this even angels long to look into these things you have the attentive attentive gaze the attentive attention of angels because they long to see salvation becoming manifest. Is that okay? So, so you've got their attention. It's not like they're fluttering around in heaven or somewhere like that, some other place, flapping around and every now and then, oh, okay, uh, God wants me to. No, no, you have their gaze. 
Is that right? And so they're looking in to this salvation. They want to understand it. They want to see it. So, so what is this salvation? So, um, um, in, in, that was in 1 Peter. <clears throat> in, the, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, Paul says the mystery of godliness is great. It's you know, without doubt. It's with, without controversy. And he talks about the fact that the mystery of godliness is this. God was made manifest in the flesh. Amen? And then it says, he was justified in the spirit by his resurrection from the dead. Thirdly, it says that he was seen of angels. The first time ever angels saw God, because God is spirit, therefore invisible. The first time they saw God was when God was in Jesus, born as a baby. First time first time that's why choirs of angels appeared and started singing and telling the shepherds get you know to Bethlehem go and see you. there you will find him and the angels were singing because they longed to look into these things of salvation and they were looking and they go like wow God in the flesh Woo! amen and that's why we have the attention of angels because they seeing God in the flesh they seeing salvation being formed is that good they, you have their attention because they see God in the flesh. This is what God in the flesh looks like. This is what God in the flesh looks like as a daughter of the Most High God. This is what God looks like. So we have their attention. So they become their heirs to facilitate it. And they saw the full grown, full grown mature Christ. And so they're there to assist the preaching of the word. They're there to assist the ministry of the spirit to facilitate all of those. They assist you in prayer. They help in every way because what they want to see is Christ fully formed in you. Yes. Heirs of salvation. Yes. Amen. So let's get back to our key verse. I want to tell you that from now on you shall see. Yes. 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 Tell the person next to you from now on you shall see much greater things Woo! greater 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 things very interesting and i'd never seen it before when, until the lord gave me this word to study and to prepare but in daniel the when when daniel was interpreting Neb, Neb, nebuchadnezzar's second dream in daniel chapter 4 remember he had the dream about the tree cut down remember and, uh, and that was God saying, because you were proud, I'm going to cut down your kingdom. And it's very interesting that in three places in uh, Daniel 4, in verse 13, verse 17, verse 23, he refers to the angels, and I've never seen it before. Listen to this. He refers to the angels as watchers. Watchers. Watchers, because they were watching over the kingdom because of its role with Israel. They were watching. They were watching over that place. So they are watching. So they're keen to see what salvation God can bring because God was preserving the seed through which Christ would come in Babylon. So they were interested because they, they were um, administering and, and protecting the seed. So they were watching. They were watching. So they inspired the dream to Nebuchadnezzar. They inspired the interpretation of the dream um, to Daniel because he says, at night the vision's in my mind. A watchman came. When they're watching they're watching now i know that god watches over us and he's omnipresent and he's omniscient and and all of those things but god in his wisdom has set up a whole um, atmosphere a whole realm called the spiritual realm and he has ministering spirits uh, called angels assigned to us is that good and so we need to understand they winds their flames of fire so they're watchers they're watchers so now just go with me to uh, Psalm 68. In Psalm 68, um, I've, I've got just some scripture there that I want you to read. Psalm 68. Go with me to Psalm 68, verse 11. Um, everybody say, okay, it's good. It's getting better. It's good. It's getting better. All right. I'll leave the full notes with Pastor Bruce. But it says this, the Lord gave the word. What do you say? The Lord gave the word. I'm just helping because I do not want you to fall asleep. Okay, so the Lord gave the word. This is the King James translation. And great was the company of those that published it, who declared it. So there was a big company of those that declared the word with him. Is that okay? So who gave the word? God. And then there was a company who declared the word with him. Woo okay, I'm going somewhere with this, all right? And so look at down, drop down 
into uh, verse 17. It says the chariots of God. Is it up on the screen? The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. All right. So now this is English, okay? So let's have a look at those words there. So what are the chariots of God? Or how many of the chariots of God? It's just, it's, it's symbolic number. It means it's innumerable. It's 20,000, even thousands. And then it says, even thousands of angels. So just the laws of deduction from English, the chariots of God are angels. Is everybody reading? Are you reading? The chariots of God are angels. And it says, um, the Lord is among them. Who? He's amongst the angels. So in other words, wherever God is, angels are all around him. He said, as in Sinai, how many of you know on Mount Sinai, and especially with the giving of the law, they saw lightnings, they, they heard thunders, rumblings, they saw fire, they saw billows of smoke, there was wind, and so God was there, and he was in amongst angels. Is that okay? in amongst the angels in amongst the angels i know this is new for you but that's good i'm stretching you okay so he was in amongst um angels now look at this it says as in sinai in the holy place right is there another holy place is there another holy place this is a holy place so is if god is here and god is in you it means that he is attended with angels. Is that okay? Okay. I, I love this stuff. I, I like it. Amen. And uh, so he's amongst angels. So the chariots of God are angels. Now it's really interesting that the next verse says, Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast left captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts or given gifts to men. Yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might, be, might dwell amongst them. Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Come on. Daily loadeth us with benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, and forget not all his benefits who daily loadeth us with benefits because God who is surrounded by angels woo -woo, dwells in the holy place. Amen. And is giving gifts unto men, daily loading us with benefits. Sure. The benefits can be provision. The benefits can be healing. The benefits can be protection. The benefit can be anything. Amen. Uh, that is pertaining to salvation because we are heirs and they're here to serve us. Amen. I'm doing my best. Amen. So in, in, uh, in 2 Kings chapter 2, I don't know if you remember the story with Elijah and Elisha. When Elisha said, I want a double portion of the spirit that is upon you. And I'm starting now to come to some of the crux of the matter. I had to say enough to set a background and a context for what I want to share. And so in 2 Kings chapter 2, um, um, you know, uh, Elisha was following Elijah. What do you want me to do for you? I want a double portion of the spirit that's on you. Well, if you see me when I'm taken up, you can have it. Okay? And they were walking together, and then something separated them. And, uh, and Elisha cried out and just said, my, my Lord, my Lord, oh Father, my Father. He says, the chariots, the horsemen of Israel. So, Psalm 68. So what came between them? It looked like chariots and horsemen. But who was it? It was angels. Is that Okay. And then angels accompanied him. He was taken up and then something fell off of Elijah and it landed on the ground. I saw him when I, he was raised up. And now I understand he gives gifts unto men. Okay? Daily loading them with benefits. And he was able to pick it up and he says, When I was the God of Elijah, twice as many miracles in a short space of time, he got a double portion of the Spirit. Amen. So I want to throw this in right now. Angels are servants. They very happy to be in the background, not known. That's why only two of them in the Bible do we know their names. It's only the apocryphal books which are not inspired scripture that gives other names. But they, they wish to remain anonymous in a sense. But it doesn't mean they're not there. And they're not present. It doesn't mean they're inactive. No, they're active. And they become more active when we do are doing and fulfilling certain things 
And so, and I'm going to throw it in now, and I'm going to come back to it just now. Angels are instrumentally involved in the release of the Spirit in a church. They are absolutely instrumental. It was the chariots and horsemen that separated Elijah and Elisha. And then the Spirit fell. And so they're instrumentally involved, um, immensely involved in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Remind me to come back um, to that. And so in 2 Kings chapter 6, when, when um, um, you know, the Syrians were coming in and raiding the people of God and um, there was a prophet by the name of Elisha um, amongst the people and so whenever the Syrians would set an ambush God would speak to Elisha and he would tell the king well I just want to tell you the, the Syrian raiding bands the armies are waiting and they've set up ambush there and then they would go and do a counter ambush and defeat them I mean isn't that like God isn't it awesome yeah. and uh, and so they were going, the king of Inchi said, there must be a traitor. Somebody said, no, there's a prophet who can tell you even the thoughts you think in your bedroom. And he said, we've got to get him. And so they found out he was in, um, I think it was a Dothan or somewhere, uh, one of the towns. And they went and surrounded him. That morning, the servant went out, and he looked up and was like, oh my goodness, the chariots and, and horsemen of the Syrian uh, uh, king were on the mountain surrounding the town. And he ran back down to tell Elisha and he said, you know, something like, O-M-G, Ikum Muleke. Something like that, if he was living in South Africa, you know. But it was like, oh my goodness. And he runs down and, and, and Elisha was completely unperturbed. He was not worried. So he just said, oh, Lord Jesus, open his eyes. Immediately his eyes open. Runs up and he goes, looks and goes, chariots of fire and horsemen behind the chariots. Oh my word more are with us than with them. What was he seeing? They manifest as chariots and horsemen, but it was the angels of God. <laughs> Amen? Surrounding the enemy. Woo! And you know the whole story how they were struck with blindness and then were taken in and, uh, you know, Elisha single-handedly handed over a whole army to the king and said, yeah, well, yeah I caught them all for you. Awesome. What one man or woman can do what one heir of salvation can do if we understand the realm from which we are operating is that okay and i know i understand i understand that you understand that i'm not replacing god or jesus or the holy spirit with angels i'm making you aware of another re reality that is with us is that okay and so and so they just single-handedly captured the whole army and just led them in they said come come you Come, come. And they took the whole army and handed them over. And then their eyes opened. They were like, oh, no, no, we surrounded. So come on, God is able to set up ambushes for everything that comes against you. Amen? Amen. We, need, we need to know uh, what we're about and, and what is behind us. Is that good? And uh, it will give you confidence always. And so in Second Kings chapter 13, um, Elisha's old and he starts to realize um, he's going to join the cloud of witnesses. Is that okay? And then the king Joash comes to him and they were still being bothered by um, uh, other countries and the armies coming and raiding him. And um, when, when Joash sees Elisha and he sees that he's fading and about to exit this world, his cry is, my father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. Do you know what Joash was saying? my father my father you are someone that understands this realm what are we going to do if you go where are the chariots and the horsemen going to be who is going to intercede for us like you interceded who is going to stand as a prophet like you with accompanying signs and wonders listen church you if we understand we are elisha's chariots and horsemen are with us amen that that that, that angels accompanying us is that good and so, so that was the king's uh, uh, concern. What's going to happen is, is, you know, the door's going to close on the heavenly realms. No, no, we have an open heaven. Is that okay? The church is the house of God. The church is the gateway of, of heaven. And we live in an open heaven realm. And angels are with us. Woo! Amen? Watching, watching, concern to see us come into the full measure, the full stature, the full image of Christ. 
Hallelujah. So they're watches. They're watches. Just, I just want to bring out two things they're concerned with. They really move on faith. They move by prayer. If you look at it right throughout the Bible, you can see it. Simple occasion when Peter was imprisoned and the church was praying. And uh, um, God moved and set Peter free. But it was his angel. It was his angel that came and set him free. Because when Rhoda, the, the, the servant girl, went to the door when Peter was knocking, he opened and she was, got such a fright that God answered the prayer. She shut the little thing and ran back and said, it's Peter standing at the door. They're going like, hello, <laughs> open the door and let him in, you know. And they, they said, are you sure it was Peter or was it his angel? In other words, your angel will take on your characteristics so closely will they want to serve you. Amen. They're so involved in your life. Come on. That should make you excited. Amen. That should make you so excited. Go like, woo! You know, more are with us than against us. Yeah. If God is for us, who can be against us? Because He's with us. The Holy Spirit is in us and Christ is in us. And then all around He puts, you know, a cloud of witnesses and angels. And they're saying, if you will understand you're an heir, they will start doing something. They'll start moving. They will start being active. They will start being in operation. So one of the things that is important for us to know that, that really activates this realm is that knowledge. Is that okay? Yes. How many of you know we need to know it? Yes. Everybody say, you need to know it. Okay? I'll leave the notes with Pastor Bruce and then he can have a look at it some more. But we need to know it. When I've done the whole series on angels, I'll, I'll um, give the series to Pastor Bruce. I'm planning to do it early in the new year on our, in our Sunday evening services. I... I have had um, angelic ministry quite frequently um, in my life and ministry. And one of the things that I, I came to realize, the more I pray, the more I pray, the more active they are. The more I pray, the more I spend time in prayer, the more active the angels become, the more active. And there's one in particular that God assigned to me, and, and uh, many times I've seen him, I've seen him with my physical eyes, not in a vision, my physical eyes. I've seen him. Now I'm sharing this with you because I just want to push something. Please don't get weird, okay? Just don't get caught up with angels. Stick with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But I just want you to become aware that they are with us. Amen? They are mentioned innumerable time in the Bible. Ministering angels seem to serve the heirs. So you just keep doing what you're doing and become aware that they are being active. So release your faith in that. Okay? And um, one of the things, so prayer is a vital part. Prayer is a vital part. Everybody say prayer. prayer. If your pastor announces prayer meeting, I expect more people in the prayer meeting than in church. Yeah. Amen. Okay? I mean, you need to pray. Is that okay? Everybody say you need to pray. Yes. Jesus didn't say if you pray. He said when you pray. He didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast. Is that okay? Um, grace doesn't mean to say we don't fast and pray anymore. No, grace means I can fast and pray more. All right. Okay, that was a good place to say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Say amen. Say amen. 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 Supernatural encounters. I'm expecting greater things for this ministry. Amen. Exponential growth. Uh, breakout in miracles and signs and wonders. Amen. Amen. Greater things. Greater things. Greater things. Greater things things greater things greater things from now on greater things amen. amen and so one of the things that they do angels minister his presence they minister his presence there's so many scriptures that we can we can read concerning that but the lord is in the midst of his angels angels create an atmosphere they minister his presence they minister the conscious awareness of his presence um, he makes his angels winds his servants flames of fire it's really interesting that when um, uh, um, Moses experienced the burning bush there's a later reference where he refers to the bush on fire as the angel of the Lord because it was a fire is that okay later on God says to him my angel will go with you and this is what he says it's because I've put my name in him 
And so the, the, uh, what that means is the, the, that the angel carrying the name of God means that he carries with him all the characteristics of God. He carries with him the, the nature of God. They don't minister themselves, they minister God. They minister the presence of God. They minister the Spirit. Good? Are you with me? And so he said, the angel will go through, and I'll, I've put my name in. So be careful you don't sin against him because you'll be sinning against my very nature and character and my presence. So closely aligned are angels with the presence of God. So angels minister the presence of God at a higher level. You could feel it in the worship this morning. You could experience something was like, mm, you know, what if we had gone just a bit further? What if? What if we had just pressed on a little bit more? Is everybody with me? What if? What if? What if? What if? Okay. And so the first thing is prayer. And uh, one of the results is that they minister his presence and there's many verses for that. But um, his word, his word. I, I, as I was studying this, I started to realize something about angels. Remember we read in Psalm 68, you know, God spoke his word. And great was a company that published it. Remember we read that? You know that many times in the Bible, in Ezekiel, um, I, I think it's in Deuteronomy, but Ezekiel anyway, I can give you the references. I'll give the notes to Pastor Bruce. In the book of Revelations, it talks about his voice sounded like the sound of many waters. And it wasn't only just the tone and the quality and the authority of his voice but it was because that when God speaks angels repeat his word great is the company that publishes it because his word is forever settled in the heavens it's forever established in the heavens but he wants his word established on the earth so there is agreement between the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But then just to make sure, in my words, my understanding, all the angels stand and they publish that word. So when God said, let there be light, the angels were going, let there be light, let there be light. Let there be light. It's established in the heavens. And then it became manifest on the earth. So everybody following me? Everybody following me? There's a power that is released when we come into agreement with the heavens. When we begin to speak His word. His voice was like the sound of many waters. And that's why He is the highest priest of our confession. But angels love to repeat and act on the word of God. His word out of his mouth, but then his word out of your mouth and my mouth. When I start to speak his word, they go, we've heard that word in the heavens. Now we come and they agree with our words. And then our voices sound like the voice of John Wasserman is like the voice of many waters. Because the angels are going, let there be. Come on, church. Tell somebody next to you. Come on, speak his word. Speak his word. Speak his word. When you speak his word, whether you're praying his word, whether you're declaring your word, the word of yourself, whenever, when you're reading the word and then begin to repeat the word, if you're prophesying the word, the angels like many waters, they're repeating the word. And there's a sound that is going out. Amen. Because they've come to help to establish his word. God watches over his word to perform it. And there's creative power in the word. But ministering spirits accompany that word because the, the Bible says that angels are his mighty ones who do his bidding. So when he says, let there be, that's his will, that's his bidding. And the angels go with the spirit and they implement. Is that good? Come on, there's more with you than there is against you. You've got more going for you than what you haven't got going for you. Come on, you, you, and if God is for you, who and what can be against you? They help to publish the word. And then um, the point that I wanted to get to you, 
as well. So all of those things in the background. The purpose, I believe, very often of angels is they long to see the Spirit of God active and released. They long to see. Angels are involved with revival. Angels are involved with the moving of the Spirit. Amen. Angels are involved with the ministry of the Spirit. Angels are involved with the moving of the Holy Spirit. Angels come and facilitate and help create an atmosphere for the move of the Spirit. Can I give you a few references? I've given you one already. When Elijah's mantle fell, Elisha picked it up and he picked up the Spirit of Elijah. And how did it happen? It's when angels intervened and they said, all right, Elijah, we're taking with you. We're taking you with us. And you're going into, um, into the, the realm of the Spirit. You're going into heaven. You're going to be with the Father. You're going to join the cloud of witnesses. But there's something that needs to remain on the earth. And that's your mantle. That's your anointing. And so they ensured that it was there for Elisha to pick it up. Is that okay? And so over and over again, we see it quite simply in Acts chapter 8 with um, 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 Philip, the, uh, you know, when he went to go and minister to the Ethiopian. First it says, and the angel came and said, get down to the straight road that leads to Gaza. So he went down. First the angel. Everybody say, first the angel. And then when he was there and he saw the chariot, then the Spirit said, get up on the chariot. Everybody say, first the angel, first, first the, the angel, angel, and then the Spirit. Angels very often prepare the way for the Spirit of God to move. Amen? That's why it's so important for us to be in prayer. Father, we pray for the service on Sunday. Don't just pitch up and be a spectator. Uh, before you even come, be a participator. Amen? Start to pray. And walk in and just say, Oh God, you hear Jesus, you hear Holy Spirit. Oh, there's angels all around. Thank you, Jesus. Is that good? Okay. Can I see some volunteers? You're going you're gonna to pray? Good. Excellent. And so stir yourself up and um, see because when they come they facilitate the ministry of the spirit it's very interesting but psalm 29 and i'm heading to a close psalm 29 verse 7 says the voice of the lord is on the waters is that okay read the whole psalm 29 beautiful psalm the voice of the lord is on the waters it does a whole lot of things but listen to what else it says the voice of the lord divideth the flames the voice of the Lord divideth the flames. The voice of the Lord. Over and over and over again, I can show you. I can tell you many other scriptures. In, for example, in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 13. You know that whole passage of Ezekiel when he sees wheels within wheels and the glory and the winged creatures touching and going straight and wherever the spirit goes, the angels go. You can see the cooperation between angel and spirit. Angel and the glory. Amen. And it also says that there's a flame of fire in there. It also says the angels go up and down. Read it in Ezekiel 1 verse 13. They go up and then they come down. What are they doing? The Bible also says in, in those same verses close by, he says the angels go, these living creatures, they go f like flashes of lightning and then they come back. Okay? What they're doing is they're going like flashes of lightning and then they come back with the answer. So they're flashes of lightning. They're fires. Is that okay? They're lightnings. So that's why Zechariah 10 says, In the time of rain, ask ye the Lord. In the time of the latter rain, ask ye the Lord for rain. The one who makes the bright thunder clouds, the lightning clouds, is the one that gives rain. So in other words, where the lightning is, where the angels are, rain comes. As a result of what? Praying. Come on, church. Come on. Come on. Get excited with me. I think I'm more excited than all of you. So you just pray. You pray. You pray. And then God says, "Woo!" You're saying, God, let it rain physically. And God, let it rain. Let it rain. Let the rain of your spirit. And then the Lord God who makes the clouds. And he makes the thunder clouds, the lightning clouds. And then the angels are going. Tch -tch 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 -tch. And they're coming back. They're going like, they're praying, Lord. Take the rain. Down they come. They're praying, Lord. They want more rain. Okay, take it. Down they go. Jesus, they're really desperate. They're praying. Like, you know, the Lord who makes the lightning clouds will send rain. Come on. Now you can give God a hand for that. Amen. And so they, they facilitate the move of the Spirit. Is that okay? They facilitate. So the voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. His servants are flames. So he divides the flames. Now remember on the day of Pentecost when they're all together in a certain place. First of all there came what? A mighty rushing what? Wind. What does he make his angels? Winds. 
So when the angels, so when just before the spirit came, first came the angels whoosh, into the place. The angels came, winds. Whoosh. Then the voice of the Lord divines the flames. So he spoke like this, and all the angels that were standing together in a fire, whoosh, like the pillar of fire with the Egyptians, with the Israelites. That pillar of fire, the voice of the Lord, he said, go, 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 settle on each one. Whoosh, that fire broke up into 120 little flames. Whoosh, 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 and sat on each one of them and each one of them immediately received the ministry of angels okay you can't even smile okay so so on their heads was this flame of fire and then what came the spirit and then they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak in other tongues Hallelujah. I'm declaring the thing before it happens, says the Lord. I'm declaring it in advance of time so that you will know that I am God. Over here and over this ministry, I'm opening the windows of heaven manifestly that you will begin to see greater things happen. If you will take my word, if you will receive my word, Zimbros, Dada, it will begin today. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. So the, the Spirit, Spirit is very keenly, keen to be involved in revival. In Zechariah, it's not in my notes, it just come to my memory. In Zechariah chapter 3, when Zerubbabel had the vision of the limitless oil, the never ceasing supply, it was an angel that woke him. An angel came and said, I want you to see in the spiritual realm what God has for you. An Im a limitless outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel came and awoke him as before. Angels want to wake you up to the spiritual reality that's yes. looming over you. The angels want to come and just get into your dream life and say, Awaken, awaken to what is imminent. Awaken, awaken. If somehow I can stir you, if somehow I can just encourage you just to, you know, just get up there and move yourself and start to pray and see what God is about to pour out. And then he says, These seven. Referring to the Holy Spirit, it says these seven are, are looking expectantly, my, my interpretation. In other words, the Holy Spirit is excited um, to see if Zerubbabel picks up this word. If you will pick up this word, I'm telling you the Holy Spirit is, is, is shaking with anticipation. That if we would just get into action, he will move. Yes. Amen? Amen? He will move. He will move. He will move. Amen. If you get into action, he will move. Amen? Say to the person next to you, if you pray, he's going to move. If you get the revelation, say, he's going to move. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.